Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us this afternoon and hopefully having a, a very interesting hour with us and understanding a bit more about uh, Stonegate and, and specifically how over the last four years Stonegate have grown their, their profits and sales, uh, which is, as we'll come to find out, a, a maybe a, a slight buck in trend versus the, versus the market. We've got with us today uh, Monty Chandana from Stonegate Pub Company. He's a, he's a senior reporting analyst there. And myself, Andrew White, uh, the director of risk solutions at, at Pi. Monty is going to be taking the stage for the majority of the, of the session today. And he's going to take you through some of the, uh, some of the details and I'll give you guys a bit of an insight into what Stonegate have been doing. Uh, to achieve this, uh, this goal. A couple of uh, housekeeping bits and pieces before we kick off the, the session today. You should be able to see a questions panel on, your right, on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, please feel free to, to use this throughout the, throughout the webinar today and we will look to answer as many of these questions as we can at the, at the end of the session. So we've got, uh, I'll run through the, through the agenda in a minute, but we've got a spot, spot at the end to actually give you guys the ability to, uh, to raise some questions and hopefully get some further insight into uh, what, what Stonegate has been doing uh, in order to achieve some of these goals. We also have a, um, a couple of polls that we will host as we go through the, the webinar today. And the aim of these is to basically give us a bit of a, a bit of context and direction with some of the points that we will discuss. So your contribution to these is is obviously greatly appreciated, and we will you'll see on your screen when we run these a, a pop up that will allow you to actually uh, answer these answer these polls and and come back to us with with some input. As I mentioned, um, let me just take you briefly through the agenda. To start with a, a bit of an introduction to Stonegate, a bit of an understanding as to what some of their, their business goals are, and then the challenges that they had in, in meeting these. What we'll then do is actually give a, a demonstration of the solution, so a real life example as to how uh, Stonegate are using uh, Pi Retail on, on a day to day basis, and then go into some detail on the, the outcomes and what Stonegate have achieved in, uh, in, the previous, in the previous year, but also in the previous, in the previous four to five years as well. We'll then uh, run that, that Q&A session, so giving you guys the opportunity to ask some of those, uh, some of those burning questions that you may have, uh, but hopefully the webinar today will inspire. And then we'll spend uh, just two minutes at the end giving a bit of an overview as to, as to who uh, who we are at Pi and how this feeds into the uh, the, the picture for Stonegate and, and what this means uh, for potentially other um, other industries as well. Uh, on that on that note, I'm going to hand over to to Monty and give him the floor for a, for an introduction to to Stonegate and to talk to you guys about the um, business. Actually, before we do that, well, let's let's just run a poll first. So. This will give hopefully us some, um, some guidance on how you guys are currently uh, running your businesses. So the, the poll that we're going to run here is in relation to reports. And let me, just, let me just share that on the screen now. So you should now be able to see this on the screen in front of you. And the question is, how often do you need to produce the majority of the reports that you uh, need to run your business is this on, a, on an hourly basis is this on a on a daily basis is it on a weekly basis or is this on a monthly basis we'll just give a couple more seconds for the uh, for you guys to actually uh, respond fantastic and let's just close the poll now So what we can see here, so interestingly, actually there are some, uh, 
some people who on an hourly basis are producing um, the majority of their reports. That's, that's very interesting. It'd be interesting to hear how you're, how you're doing at the moment. The majority of us seem to be between either daily or weekly for the majority of the reports. And hopefully this will um, align with some of what you will see today and then how this uh, would, would set you align with, with what you guys are doing on a, uh, your current systems. On that, on that note, I'm now going to, to hand over to uh, Monty and give him the floor to take you guys through in a bit of detail uh, what Stonegate are doing and some of the challenges they have. Over to you, Monty. Uh, thank you very much, Andy, and afternoon, everybody. So, uh, an overview of Stonegate. Um, so, we're the largest privately held managed pub operator in the UK with um, sales in excess of half a billion pounds per year, and we've got over 12,000 employees. Um, the company is relatively new. It was formed in 2010, and it's continuously grown um, in the last um, five, six years. We've got over 600 pubs across the country. Um, you may be familiar with such brands um, such as the Slug and Lettuce and Yates, and um, there's many other traditional pubs throughout the country. So, um, what, what the business needs is and what we wanted to achieve. I mean, the, the key is having all of this information available at the of a button in one centralized place. Um, again, everything available in a single location. So, uh, just elaborating on this, you'll know that um, your payroll information will go into one uh, one, set, uh, one place, whilst your PL information will be in another place. We want all of this centralized in one place so it's easier for our stakeholders to manage their pubs. Um, again, it's all good having this information, but we want to also direct them to the key problem areas. So, um, you know, direct them and saying, these are your problem areas, go fix these three or four key things a week in order to drive performance. And again, where you're doing well to, to congratulate the pubs and, you know, continue to motivate them to drive their, their businesses even further. And again, getting in times with uh, late technology being, being the business with with the most recent and new technology. So the challenge that we had, um, so we have over 44 area managers that have approximately 13, 14 pubs each. And and they, as you know, everyone works differently. So we, um, what we did is we asked some feedback and they came back to us with three challenges that we wanted to, to solve. Um, so the key things were not having the right information on a timely basis. Um, lots of um, reporting was being sent via email and being lost, and it was too static. And when all the information was there, it was a bit of an overdose. So, for example, one email to look at one set of information, whilst another email to look at the other set of information. So, so what we wanted to do is say, okay, let, let's produce something where it gives them a headline where they can. Uh, operationally um, run, run everything on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so on, the on that note, I'm going to hand you over to Andy who will talk you through the solution and scoping that they identified for us. Thanks, Monty. So I'm just going to spend uh, a few minutes talking through how between uh, ourselves and Stonegate we actually got to a position where we were enabling the, uh, the business to use the reports and use the, the solution that, that Monty will uh, give you guys a demonstration of in, in a short while. And one of the key points that we felt was, was very important here was the, the, uh, the engagement with the, the wider stakeholder team within, within Stonegate. We were very aware that there was going to be a considerable culture change for the organization during the, 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 the launching of this, this new solution and changes in the way that they, they managed their business, changes in the way that they, they built up their days, what they did on a day-to-day -day basis. And so there was a, a large focus throughout the, the scoping and the implementation phases where we put together sets of, of prototypes to really get a, an understanding as to how the business would, would react to uh, using a, a very uh, technologically focused solution and how we could ensure that that was uh, customized to their needs as, as best as possible. During that 
during that time, we we made a, a concerted effort to uh, to make sure that they were they were fully involved and engaged within with with the process and by specifically identifying a a small uh, group of, of of users who would actually be running with the the solution uh, throughout not only the UAT phase but then obviously when the when the solution has been launched across the business we could uh, make sure that, that our that our, our technology teams were aligned with the the business requirements making sure that as they uh, potentially changed over time we could we could adjust and fit to their to their needs and requirements this UAT phase allowed us to make sure that when we got to that to that company wide uh, release and launch we had a an engagement strategy that was uh, consistent across the business and an engagement strategy that allowed us to to uh, basically um, go go forward with a bank so when when the solution was was launched we had every single area manager, every single ops director, logging in on that day, ready to go with their report set in front of them in, in a way that would engage them and excite them and in a way that would make sure that they were they were, they were in, a, in a good position to actually start to, to use these and, uh, and, and on a day-to-day -day basis really understand uh, some intricate details of the, of the, um, the business. I'm just going to I'm just now going to jump into a, a couple of additional polls, and I'm going to I'm going to run through this quite quickly because I'm I'm aware that the the exciting part of the of the session today is more the, the more the demonstration than, than listening to me to me talk. So let's just jump into these these two polls, and then what I'll do after that is hand back over to Monty to give you uh, give you all a demonstration of, as to how the how the operations team is actually using Pi Retail on a on a day to day basis. Let me just uh, let me just launch the, the second poll here. So this is uh, this is relating specifically to the kind of tools that you guys are using today on on a day-to-day -day basis, and it would be very interesting for us to understand uh, what level of um, uh, what level some of the some of the tools that you you guys are using are. So we've got uh, we've got five options here, and these are are, are you using are you using pen and paper? Are people using Excel to drive the majority of their reporting? Uh, do people have uh, business objects implementations that they are they're using? In some cases, are there are there internally built visualization tools that, that people have uh, built themselves that are, are driving the the business, driving the the, um, the reporting, or are there externally procured solutions that people are using on a on a day to day basis? We'll just give we'll give it uh, five or ten more seconds for people to register their responses, and we'll close the poll. <clears throat> so we've got about uh, about seventy percent um, people responded there. Thank you very much for that. So what we we can see here, and maybe this is what people would expect, and the majority of the responses here is is Excel based uh, reporting, and we've got we've got a few people here who are, who are still doing reporting in pen and paper, which, which uh, would be interesting to, to hear how that uh, how that works for you guys. Uh, and we've got a few as well with um, solutions that that come from from external sources. Uh, okay, let's just jump into our third and final poll. Fantastic! So you should be able to see that on the screen now. And this relates uh, less from a from a reporting point of view, but help us get an understanding of some of the some of the challenges that you feel that you have within within your business, and what are the key challenges in order for you to be able to do what you want to do uh, on a day to day basis. Is that in relation to the the complexity of data? Is it in relation to the volume of data? Is it the fact that your you find data is is siloed in multiple locations? Uh, or is it? Do you feel to do the operational, so the organisational approach and the culture that the organisation has to uh, to data and to to analytics? Again, let's just give that a couple more a couple more seconds for people to to respond. Uh, 
OK, and let's, let's close the poll. So we can see, so we can hit, this is, again, probably what, we, what you guys would expect to see as well. There's, um, there's a large percentage where the biggest challenge is in relation to siloed data. And we've also got quite a large percentage where the, the organizational cu culture and structure is, is a challenge in being able to really understand the, uh, uh, the, the detail behind the business. Uh, Monty, I'll just hand over back to you for a second to, um, to get your thoughts on that while we get the, the demonstration up for you, for you to run through. Uh, thanks, Andy. Yeah, I mean, I think we had a similar challenge at Stonegate um, where um, having multiple data sources was probably going to be our biggest challenge, but the solutions you guys um, provided for our, our data sources um, was brilliant and and from the demonstration in a minute I'll be able to talk you through where it's different data sources that are feeding into this um, dashboard for us so fantastic Th thank you very much Monty uh, okay so let's now jump into a, a demonstration of the of, of Pi Retail and, and hopefully this will be valuable for you guys and I'll, I'll give Monty the floor again to talk you through what uh, some of their area managers do on a day-to-day -day basis Uh, thanks, Andy. So um, here you'll be able to see a um, an area manager profile, um, and we'll start off with the home page. So this gives you a sales flash for the previous day. So you can see on here the time it was last updated at um, six o'clock this morning. Um, so again, uh, the poll showed that a lot of work's done in Excel. We we used to send this via Excel. Um, someone going in at work at, uh, to head office at nine o'clock and sending this report out for all of our area managers. We've managed to now automate this process so they've got the data um, even earlier than before and it's freed up time at our head office um, in terms of automating the process. So what this report shows you is, is John Smith sales for the previous day. So you can see that he took £25,000 yesterday, which is up 4%. And below you can see all of the sites within John Smith's area and um, it's ranked on the previous year uh, versus the previous year um, ranked on percentage um, growth or decline. Um, on the far right you can see week to date so um, from Monday to um, Wednesday the performance and you can see John Smith is declining by 19k this week um, that is because of um, a seasonality shift in the bank holiday which is going to be one week later this year. So um, we've got other um, really good features of a dashboard and one of them is key headline reporting. So this feeds through um, our management accounting um, data sources and as soon as the P&Ls are finalized, this report updates for the area managers. It shows um, Stonegate's four key KPIs, so sales, profit, labor, and operating expenses, and it ranks them uh, for bottom five and top five. Again, we used to send this manually as an Excel file for only period A or whatever period it would have been um, on a monthly basis, but this is now automated. And the benefit we've got is it's interactive. So again, seasonality plays a big part in the pub industry where um, key events can move, such as Easter falling one month later. And I'm going to demonstrate to you, for example, okay, um, these five sites that are the bottom five in profit may not necessarily be um, in the bottom if you look at a longer longer time so sorry just bear with me so you've got various um, different time scales so you've got period the current period um, last period um, year to date so um, the performance from the start of the financial year and um, trends so MQT meaning moving quarterly trend which is the last three periods, i.e. 12 weeks, or the moving annual trend. And um, using these key filters, an area manager can identify, okay, year to date, what are the five sites that are causing me to miss my budget? So you can see here, William, William Morgan is 41K of my budget profit miss. Um, you've got the Castle and Craft, Craft, Crafty Dragon, but you can also see that, okay, they might be missing budget, but actually in growth versus the previous year. So all of the information they need, they, they have in this uh, key headline reporting. And 
um, area managers will know what their key problems are. So if they know control is an issue, be it in labor or ops expenses, they, they can just dive into the detail and say, okay, which sites are causing this? We've then got um, reports, uh, which gives you all the detail you need. So um, you've got daily sales, which is similar to the uh, home page, but gives you a breakdown of food, drink, and door admission sales. Um, then you've got various um, other reports, such as your heat maps. So this will be um, by day and by time slot sales for, for sites for any particular week. Volume reports, this will give you information about um, your categories, so how many pints you're selling, how many spirits you sold, how many cocktails you're selling. You've got your P&L and um, your budget. And uh, it, again, for our manager, the budget's import, important as this is what they're bonused on. So I'm going to go into one report here and give you um, a breakdown of a site. So looking at the volume report, so you can see across the top you've got drink and food volume report. So um, two sets of data feeds go in there and you've got various interactive filters on the right hand side. So reporting weeks, so looking at various weeks, you've got um, the area manager obviously John Smith and all of his sites within the area and at the bottom you've got um, various date ranges um, that we discussed. So for example, uh, MQT and MAT being your trend information. So I'm going to look at one particular site and demonstrate to you the Bridgewater. And I'm going to show you last year its performance. So in, two, in the financial calendar of 2015, um, the Bridgewater's performance in terms of volume was 9.3% down um, per week and sales were down by 4.4%. Now you can you can dive into the detail and say, okay, what does that mean in terms of actual physical volume? So we're selling a thousand less drinks uh, than we previously were, and in terms of sales, sales are down uh, nearly a thousand pounds a week. Now, looking at the sales mix, um, you can see that draft. So with majority of the sales that go through this pub um, are pints and draft beer, um, and you can see that volumes of 10% uh, were in decline and you can identify straight away that looking at the price, year on year, the price has gone up by 12p. So it, the, the pricing strategy obviously initially set out of the site hasn't gone to plan in terms of from a volume point of view where we have lost volume, but from a margin point of view it has been beneficial. Now at this stage an area manager can make a decision to say, okay, I'm going to hold price at this pub and continue trading as we are to say, let, let's find dry performance. So looking at a turnaround in performance and looking at more recent times, so the MQT basis, as you can see, it's very interactive. Um, they've got the information to hand. Um, um, you can see that the volumes have actually now in growth of by 1.6%, and sales are in growth of 0.2%. So where draft was in decline of 10% volumes, it's now in decline of 2%. And you can drive into the d detail again and say, okay, price-wise, instead of being... Uh, up 12 pence last year, it's now only, it's now, um, we, we've reduced price by 2 pence and um, what that's driven is driven the volume and a turnaround in performance. So having that ability and that in information for an area manager is priceless um, when speaking to their pubs, when being in the pubs and making uh, important decisions in terms of strategy. I mean, there is no investment or anything that happened in this pub. It is, it is genuinely um, a turnaround in performance, um, which is driving this site um, to, to perform really well. Now, just continuing this, um, as you know that the year-on-year -year improvement of 1.6, you can still further look into the detail. So we know in M on an MQT basis that the sales were up 1.6%. Um, now, if we look at heat maps, it will show you an interesting story. So. Just an overview of the actual report itself, um, you can see sales, volume and margin, and you can see by time slot and day um, where your key trading hours are. So I'm going to go back to the Bridgewater example and, and look at the um, last 12 weeks, um, again, at an MQT basis, and you can see that, okay, majority of the sales go through um, on a Friday and Saturday night, but uh, when looking at this on an uh, annual basis, so year on year, the improvement or um, decline 
you can see, okay, this site's doing really well. Um, remember the number of 1.6%, but there is opportunity. So it's all good um, having a turnaround in the site, but there's always further improvements. Um, that data tells you that, that Sundays are declining by 42%, and there is further opportunity to improve performance, um, which is a really good story. Again, the area manager can then look into the detail. So, okay, say, is it drink or food that's causing this decline? It's having that information to hand, which has been um, the key um, benefit of, of the dashboard. Um, just moving on um, to the PNLs. I'm going to demonstrate this now. So, the traditional way StoneGate send PNLs out were in a PDF format, which was static for that current period, and um, and um, literally they could they could get lost. We used to have every manager request to say, "Can you resend the PNLs?" Um, but this is a, a much more better and interactive way of showing the PNLs. So this PNL is rolled up for John Smith as a total. Again, you've got loads of um, trends you can look at: um, last period, MQT, MAT, year to date. Um, you can choose a specific period, so you're not re reliant on them PDFs. And you've got all your sites. So looking at the Bridgewater as an example again, um, in period eight, you can see the performance um, was 21% up on sales uh, year on year. And um, going down to the, the bottom line, which is profit, the most important line, uh, it was up 45% for the year. Um, you can see that it, it was beating its budget by, by 10K and up 8K um, for, the, for the year. Um, so in comparison to last period, okay, so um, you can see that last period of the site only grew by 5%. So you can see the improvement in performance. And I'm just going to go through recent trends. So as I said, last, last period, it grew by 5.5%. If you look at MQT, so which is the last three months, it's been 17% growth. So a really good performance there. Uh, MAT um, will cover the last 13 months. So it, will come, it will cover some of the period. F, um, the financial year 2015 where the site was declining and you can see that the profit was in decline at 7.2% 7 7 but in recent times it has had a real turnaround in performance and, and having this information for business reviews with site is, um, is amazing for the area managers. So that's the P&L. Um, again, another challenge that we were, challenge that we had was the document manager, so um, all the number of emails that we send out, we've now centralized all reporting uh, for the area managers in one place where they can go in and select specific periods in the, in the data they need uh, as and when required. And then there's um, a few resources um, that, you know, just useful links that they can um, use. So that key um, area manager uh, dashboard in a nutshell, um, it's proven to be very successful and the usage stats show that it's used on a daily basis um, by all the area managers. So just um, to summarize the, the site we were looking at, um, the Bridgewater volumes uh, at the end of 2015 were in decline by 9.3%. In the last 12 weeks, this has grown by 1.6%, so an improvement of 10.9%. Um, again, sales minus 4.4%, and in the last week, last 12 weeks, 0.2%. So an improvement of 4.6%. Price again, as, as that was a strategy um, at the time by the area manager not to take any price, has, has clearly seen a volume increase, and it's converted on the bottom line. And having a decline in profit of minus 1.6 to an improvement of 17%. I mean, 18.9% is very, very good. And if we can do that for all of our pubs, I mean. Um, it'll be a great achievement. So just for you guys to read um, some area manager feedback, again, as I said, um, the usage is um, showing that it's, it's a very good um, tool for, for the area managers and um, how successful it has been, really. And again, this was built for the area managers, and this is what they asked for. It, it's come a long way in the last year, year I'd say. So just a few um, key takeaways. So again, sales have increased, and you can see that we can do that from the volume reports and heat maps. Um, the insight we're given 
um, is much more than previously. So the key headline reporting um, with the top ten and bottom um, top five and bottom five sites, sorry. And then customer services. So some of the information you might not have seen in there already is um, we've managed to integrate our Facebook and Twitter feeds um, via Pi. And again, we can focus on not just the P&Ls, the, the customer and uh, cu customer views of the pub. And we're trying to improve customer service and drive performance that way as well. Um, looking at margins, yield, and stock reports, we've managed to um, integrate a report which t tells um, all operators how much stock uh, the pub has, how much stock has been lost, and on a weekly basis since this report has been l launched, the, the improvement um, of yield um, has been absolutely magnif magnif magnificent. So um, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, the takeaways are great. I mean, we're not stopping here. We've got a dashboard B2 where we're going to be linking in um, more data feeds in the next um, few months. And um, yeah, I mean, the power of data is incredible. And um, as, uh, one other thing that I haven't mentioned is we're a growing company. So we, we've bought additional pub companies on different um, data systems. And it's effortless, it, 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 the integration has been effortless, really. I mean, the output you see is across different different till systems, different data sources, and it's a seamless procedure, really, and thanks to the guys at Pi, really. So I'm now going to hand you over to Andy. Uh, fantastic, Monty. Thank you very much for that. That was extremely interesting for me, and I'm hoping was valuable for, for you guys as well. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into a, a bit of a Q&A session. So, We've hopefully had some questions that you guys have been raising with us over the, uh, over the past uh, 40 minutes or so, 30 minutes or so. And along with some, some questions that we had from the, uh, from the initial emails that went out, uh, we're going to try and answer as many of these as possible now in the next uh, 15 minutes or so. So Let's, uh, let's pick these up and uh, we will, Monty and I can probably share the, the answers to some of these questions uh, and we'll, we'll on a question by question basis uh, take a call as to who is the, uh, who's the best person to, to pick these up. Uh, so the first, the first question we've got here, in, and actually Monty this is probably something that it's best for you to, to maybe lead on, is in relation to the, uh, to the benefit of uh, of the solution. So, the question is: um, Is the benefit that you're finding from the uh, from Pi Retail greater than greater than the cost? Um, yeah, Andy. Um, absolutely. I mean, uh, we're a highly analytical company. Um, we look at all the attention to detail we get using all the data sources. And look, at the end of the day, we've been growing sales and profit in a market where sales haven't actually been growing. Um, for other companies, so we're extremely proud of what we've achieved, and the the data that we have has allowed us to look at all various different um, com company issues that we may have. So um, I, I absolutely think so. Fantastic, thank you, thank you very much for that. So the second um, the second question, and maybe uh, I can I can pick this one up um, and ask this maybe from a slightly wider perspective is around uh, users and access. The question here is how many, how many users access the system and how do they get the reports? So within, uh, within Stonegate, the, the user base is, I think it's uh, just under three figures. So it's between about 290 and 100 different users. This includes a, a subset of the, of the central finance team as well as the entire operations division. And Every single one of those users accesses the uh, the reports through um, through through the Pi portal. So actually, exactly as you guys have seen in the in the demonstration that Monty's given today, they have a uh, their own username and password. They log in, and that provides them with the with the access to uh, to the different reports that you've seen today. Uh, this is this is just one example, though. I, I my my estimation across. Uh, across all of our clients, really, we have probably somewhere between uh, 10 and, and 10 to 15,000 different users uh, utilizing, utilizing uh, different Pi reports and accessing through a, through a similar methodology to what, 
the, um, the guys have shown particularly today. Uh, this, is, this is both um, computer enabled as well as uh, iPad, iPhone or your choice of technology as you, as you wish. Okay, so the next question, maybe Monty, this is, this is quite uh, relevant at the moment and a good one for you to, uh, to pick up and lead on. So the question is, uh, how, how are you going to manage uh, the, the challenge of the, the change in, in wage of the national living wage and at the same time look to maintain margins? Um, yeah, Andy, so again, data is the answer here. So in a nutshell, we deployed a labour efficiency tool which, um, which gave us direction of saying, okay, um, the number of, um, giving us direction by saying, okay, these are the number of drinks sold at this certain time. So, for example, if, if you're selling three or four drinks um, between nine and ten in the morning, do you really need three or four staff behind the bar? We've become more efficient. So, when, when the data is telling us, okay, you need, uh, you're selling 30, 40 drinks per every 15, 20 minutes, um, we can therefore um, deploy more staff and become more efficient. So that's the way we've sort of tackled that. And I mean, um, with that data, we've managed to um, save a lot of money um, and reduce the deficit of the minimum wage going up. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks, Monty. Okay, there's a couple of questions here that maybe uh, I can I can pick up and answer for you guys. So there's one here about uh, specifically uh, data collection and, and the use of data. So Monty already touched on this previously. So with with Stonegate, they have over the past uh, five years or so grown significantly via acquisition. And as I'm sure some of you will be aware, when this Kind of scenario happens, there is a, a large increase in the number of uh, different data feeds that often need to feed into the an overarching report. And we, with all of our clients, and this isn't isn't limited just to Stonegate by any stretch of the imagination. With, with all of our clients, we look to take data at the the most granular level. So with Stonegate, we're, we're extracting uh, transaction level data directly from the from the EPOS systems. And this is what is rolling up into all of the reports that we, we see today. And what this allows us to do is to provide some of the, some of the high level reports that we've already looked at, but it also gives us a lot of flexibility in, in terms of really understanding the, uh, the, the the customer base for for the for Sony in this case. So being able to look at, for example, things like basket analysis, where we can start to understand what impact does a promotion have on a specific subset of products. Are we finding that, for example, if we put a promotion on a on a meal or a promotion on a beer, is it actually driving sales into the business within other segments, not just the promotion that uh, the, in question that we've launched, or for example, how does the how does weather impact our our sales? What on a on a daily basis does the what impact does the weather have? What impact do sporting events have? So being able to really start to pull together a, a, a subset of models that allow the business to really predict the, um, the predict and forecast accurately the the way that the business needs to be needs to be ran and, and can be uh, can be tuned for the for the environment. And there's, there's another question here also about uh, about dashboards and whether or not uh, real time dashboards are are utilised. So Monty, I wonder if um, if in a second you can you can add a little bit to to this. So we we've got a couple of clients where actually they they utilise dashboards on a on a real time basis. One of one of one sector here is is actually the, the health sector with, with hospitals and, and how they use, uh, use data to understand the, the throughput of, of patients. Um, we also have uh, some examples in the retail sector where actually some, some clients are looking at uh, intraday sales. So, so with Stonegate we have um, intraday data extract processes that run, so they have the ability if, if they wish to, uh, to look at um, sales, for example, uh, through and how it's changing throughout the day, how that aligns with with labour. I think once it's probably fair to say that, that the majority of your business runs on a uh, on a day-to-day -day basis rather than intraday. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, daily basis. I mean, as you can see, daily sales update in the morning, all other reports. It is on a daily basis, yeah. So there's just, um, just a follow-up question here that we've, we've just had in in relation to uh, the collection of data. And it, it's in, so the, the question here is, are there, are there multiple EPOS systems that you collect data from, or does StoneGate have one common EPOS system uh, chain-wide? So this is a, and Monty, maybe there's something you want to pick up on here in relation to strategy in a minute, but the, uh, the number of um, EPOS systems that are currently used in order to provide the, the different reporting environments, I think it's, it's either four or five. Um, I believe at the moment every single pub is utilizing the same EPOS system, but due to that growth in acquisition, we have actually got um, historic feeds that come in from a number of different EPOS systems, and therefore there is always the requirement to do that, uh, that, that, that normalization and integration of uh, sales, be it uh, categorizations and promotions, be it the naming conventions, or uh, actually understanding how different uh, data is stored by different EPOS providers, even after a, a migration to a, to a new system has taken place. Monty, is there anything that you want to add there on, on the strategy in relation to systems? Um, well, no, nothing. Just to say, um, just want to say one thing is um, the fact that w we do acquire pubs on a regular basis. We've been through three or four acquisitions, and all of these acquisitions, the EPOS systems were on uh, the tills were on different EPOS systems, and and um, the speed and manner of which um, Pi were able to integrate all of this was absolutely brilliant. So. Um, for every managers, it's like the site's integrated and they've got all the historical and um, current data um, integrated and migrated in one place. So thanks for that, guys. Cool. Thank, thanks, Monty. So another, another question here, and maybe this is one that's good for, for you to pick up, but this fits in quite nicely actually with some of the work that you've, um, you've shown today. Uh, how, have, how has um, Pi Retail actually helped with email optimization. So maybe just a bit of a follow-up on some of the bits that you've already talked about here. Yeah, just a follow-up. So um, uh, as we said, one of the challenges was to reduce the number of emails being sent out. And you saw that the volume reports, heat maps, they were all static PDFs that used to get sent out to our area managers, which used to plug their inbox up. They weren't dynamic or interactive. We've stopped all of them emails going out, so the only way uh, area managers and operators access this information is through the, um, the dashboard, and secondly, the document manager, which I uh, also demonstrated. So all of the other reports, rather than go through email, we um, push to, to Pi, and they load it onto the um, dashboard for the operators to use as and when required. And it has reduced the number of emails going out um, significantly really. I mean, close to 1, 1,200 emails per week being reduced as a result of this. Fantastic. I'm, I'm sure that has a, a great <laughs> impact on the, on the operations guys and how they, how they manage or don't need to in quite the same way these days manage their inboxes. Um, okay, so there's one, uh, one final question. Maybe there's a, a, a both, both of us can have a, a bit of a, an input into this. Uh, maybe you, maybe best for you to, to lead on this. So the question is around um, specifically the production of dashboards for both internal and external customers. How do StoneGate use uh, scenarios like this and maintain the ability to drill down into the detail where necessary? Okay, so um, internal, we've already demonstrated today um, the dashboard. Um, example of external customers is um, obviously the internal data was all from EPOS systems and um, our central um, data sources. However, external customers, so for example, our suppliers who we purchase all of our goods from have, have feeds set up directly with Pi who push all of the data across to them and it produces all of our, our reporting that we want to share with them so we have the ability to share what we want to them, so uh, it's, it's actually called sales in, so we share with our, our, our customers, external customers, how much we're purchasing, and um, again, the, the detail is specific to each, each supplier, really. Anything you want to add, Andy? 
Yeah, so this is this is actually an area that we do quite a lot of work in uh, with some of our other clients where there is, for example, compliance reporting that needs to go specifically to a, um, to, a, to a service provider or to a customer. And PI actually provides a subset of reports that is automating both the internal reports to, to, the, to, the, to, to our customer, as well as automating the, the external reports with a different uh, with a subset of the data and a different amount of drill down to the um, to, to the customers of, uh, of our clients. And this is, uh, there's actually some quite nice examples here where we're doing this in, in the procurement space where a, a, um, a client, so a, a, for example, a, a hospital or a, uh, a, a large organization who procure, who procure materials are using um, the, the PI procurement service to benchmark and understand their uh, their spend profiles versus um, their some of their competitors potentially, or versus other other um, uh, other uh, industries or other uh, organisations within the within the industry, and the ability for them to do that in an anonymised fashion, so that there is a different level of, of detail and a different level of granularity within the reports, depending on whether they're looking at their own data or or data from uh, other other organisations, and that helps them to uh, to profile their, their spend or profile their, the services that they are that they're offering. Great. So that's um, that's hopefully given uh, you guys some of the answers to your questions. There's um, there's a couple more. There's a few more questions that uh, we will follow up with off the back of the uh, the webinar today as well. So uh, if we didn't get a chance to answer the questions that uh, one of the burning questions that you had we can um, we can take those offline and come back to you uh, directly on those uh, thank you all very much for those those questions that you have posed over the last 20-25 um, minutes or so what we're going to do now is just uh, give you a very brief um, overview as to as to who PI are so uh, Monty's uh, very kindly talked us through some of the implications uh, of Pi Retail for, for Stonegate, but I thought it might be useful just to give a two-minute overview as to some of the other areas that we work in. And you can see from uh, the screen here, there's there's actually a very uh, wide uh, set of sectors that, that we we support. And although it may seem that uh, these don't necessarily have a huge amounts in common, the the main uh, consistency and the main uh, driver that is true across all of these sectors is a, a set or vo a volume of data that is very often sitting in disparate sources, very often siloed and hard to understand and in all scenarios uh, it's, it's businesses that, that know that they have this information but just are not able to, to use and, and action it. And actually, what we've found from um, working with these these different areas is that there is a lot of, of value that can be applied across across markets, across sectors. So some of the some of the key focus in in, in retail around uh, immediate reporting and understanding uh, with with great volumes of data what is uh, what is happening within the uh, within the business on a day to day basis uh, can be. Supplemented by some of the uh, some of the values that we that we drive for in say the health sectors where we're looking at the the pathways of patients and understanding customer or patient journeys in this case to really enable the the organisations to uh, drive efficiencies in the in the sector and the this kind of all this feeds into our to our aim and goal as a as a business which is is very much enabling our our clients to really make the the most of the uh, data and the intelligence that they hold, but aren't necessarily able to uh, to utilise on a on a day to day basis. Fantastic. Well, I hope that has been uh, interesting and exciting for everyone. Uh, thank you all again very much for your for your time and for listening. And I hope to um, speak to some of you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.